What is going on guys, Ryan Nelson here, and today we're taking a look at the Luminar 3 photo editing software and seeing if it can be a good alternative to Lightroom, maybe even replace Lightroom altogether. But today I'm taking a look at the quick features when you just dive right in, if you're coming over from Lightroom or Capture One and see how intuitive and easy this is to use. So let's take a look. But before I get started, just wanted to let you know they did send me a free copy of this, so I did not pay for this. Uh, it was provided by them. They are not paying for this video. This is an honest review. I uh, just wanted to put that out there so you guys know what's going on. So when you first open up this program, it's gonna give you a nice little walkthrough of its basic features, some kind of easy things to get you going and get you in. I think that was pretty clear, pretty concise, kind of walks you through a few of its good features. So be sure to read those. Now to add some photos to the program to start off and we're gonna come up here, click on this little arrow and add folder. Wherever you're keeping your photos at the time, just click add folder. It will do exactly that. Add the folder to the program so you can just start editing your photos. Now, one thing I have found going through this is that if you have multiple hundreds of photos, this program doesn't run really, really fast. It's actually kind of laggy, it's kind of slow, and that may be because I'm working on a machine from 2013. So it might not be designed to work with this hardware. It might be designed to work with newer MacBooks and Mac Pros. So it may be that, or then again, it may just be a very processor heavy program. So what I've done is gone ahead and just selected about 20 different photos so we don't have to wait for all these other photos to load. So let's dive into the editing portion of this. So part of my workflow is as soon as I import my images, I get in there and I rename them all to the date in either the name of the client or the location that I was shooting. But in this program, there is no way to batch rename your photos, so I'm still gonna have to do that in Lightroom. So the very first thing that I noticed when I tried to import my photos from my EOS R is it does not read CR3 files. So I had to go convert them over to DNG files. Uh, once again, you're gonna need Lightroom for that, and if you don't have Lightroom, you can download the Adobe DNG converter. I'll link that down below in the description if you need that. So go ahead and check that out. It's come in handy for me quite a few times already. All right, so once we get the photos finally in here, you're gonna wanna go over to your edit tab and under your filters, it's gonna default to quick and awesome. I changed that over to professional and then you can go ahead and click up here and set as default or you can click add filters and build your own custom uh, filter kit basically. All right, so once you get all your filters set up, this layout looks a lot like Lightroom uh, with your basic adjustments, uh, denoising, saturation, vibrance, uh, curves, and HSL sliders, and just lots of other little filters that you can add, uh, use if you want, or just take away and create your own custom set, whatever you're gonna use a lot. Now, a few filters that I've found that have been pretty nice to add to, not all photos, but some photos, uh, the sun rays, golden hour, and then one that I'm really digging, is this guy right here, the foliage enhancer. Now this works if you're out uh, shooting in the mountains or maybe even this scene. Let's see what it does here. This is totally unadjusted, but we just bring that up. It just adds some greens and yellows to the leaves. It looks really nice. I've been digging that slider quite a bit. Now a lot of these filters do have masking options. I'll dive a little bit more into that in a different video, uh, but just so you know, they are there. A lot of the times when I'm editing, I like to copy the image so I have two versions of it that I can edit completely differently, blend them together later in Photoshop. But so far in Luminar, I have not been able to uh, duplicate the image so I can have two versions of it to make different adjustments. Not super thrilled about that, but I do think there is a layers option in here. I haven't looked into it too much yet, but that may be the solution to what I'm looking for. One other random issue that I've had, and you can see it right here, is that it occasionally just completely destroys the integrity of the photo. Uh, I don't know why it's doing this. I haven't made any adjustments to this photo, but it's clearly not matching up with the thumbnail. It's really blown out. And then if I go and bring the exposure down, it's got a massive red tint to it. And I'm not sure what's going on with this. And I really just have not figured out how to correct that and get it back to the normal exposure. So that's one big issue that I've run into on about two or three photos so far. Now, if you just wanna do some quick, dirty, fast editing, if you're on the go, you just wanna pump some photos out for Instagram, you're just like, I got this banger shot, I gotta get it up there. Just click on this tab up here, and this brings up what's called the Luminar Looks Collection. 
And then you can select various different preset filters. Just pop that right onto your photo, find one that looks good, and just roll with it. Then you can go back and adjust some of these settings after the fact. But just know that if you do go do some adjustments and then click on a different filter, it completely wipes out all the adjustments you just did. So once again, that would be a good spot where duplicate image would be really handy. But going back to this program not working super well on this computer, every time I'm just doing any bit of editing or even scrolling through photos in here, this computer, this laptop gets really, really hot. And you can tell that, you know, it's, it's definitely working a lot harder than it does in Lightroom. But what really, really matters in this program is the photo editing capabilities. I have been pretty impressed with that. At this point, it's not a great alternative to Lightroom. It's not going to do all the features, all the functionalities of Lightroom. But as for just a photo editor, it has a lot of really cool features. Uh, really, it cranks out some really nice photos for sure. So I'm gonna do a quick down and dirty edit on this photo just to show you real quick how good this program does for photo enhancing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start off with the autumn colors filter. Bump that AI enhance filter up just a tiny bit. Uh, sky enhancer, we'll bring that down because there is not much sky in this at all. Bring that saturation up a tiny bit. Vibrance down just a little bit. Uh, here we have our foliage enhancer. I'm gonna crank that up a tiny bit. Clarity, and I'm gonna add my raw development. Go ahead and give that photo a little bit more warmth. I think the overall exposure is pretty good. Bring those shadows down a little bit to give it a little bit more mystery. And those whites up really make those light rays shine. All right, so we can go back over here. Let's see, let's see what a dehaze does on this. That's looking pretty nice. What if we add a little bit of golden hour? Give it a little bit of warmth. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give this one last touch. Add a few more sun rays in there because that sun definitely is already adding some rays. We'll add a few more, why not? Put that right where you want it. Pump that up a little bit. There we go. There's my next Instagram post. Bang, boom, bing, bang, boom, done, boom, boom. Instagram, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's over there going like this. I can't believe I married this fool. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Okay, so here's where we're at with this image. One really cool feature I like about this is the before and after comparison. So just click this guy right here, and you can actually just slide this back and forth. Kind of see where you started and where you're at now. Look at that difference. That's pretty cool. After that, I'll just go up here, export, save that as a Photoshop file in Adobe RGB, where I save all the rest of my exports. Give that a little minute to export. Once again, not as fast as Lightroom, but it does have some really cool photo enhancing features. Uh, I will do this for my selects photos. I'm not gonna use it as a file browser, kind of looking through and just starring things. I find that to be maybe a little bit tedious in this program and maybe a little bit taxing on the computer system itself. But for photo editing enhancing, really digging this. Look, this is still exporting one photo. Lightroom would have been done like that. But anyway, that's okay, no big deal. Thanks for sticking around guys. Let me know if you like this. Let me know what your thoughts are on this Luminar program, if you've ever used it or not. I'm going to recommend it, not as a file browser, but as just a kind of one-off photo enhancing program. They did give me an affiliate link. I'll drop that down below in the description. So go ahead and check that out. You get an extra $10 off for using that link. So you're welcome. I just saved you 10 bucks. Once again, this is not a subscription program that you have to buy. You just buy it once and it's yours, that's it. And this photo is still exporting. Why is this taking so long? Anyway, if you like this video, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button down there, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of these, and I will see you guys next time.